going to be going back, the Lord willing, into chapter 12. But I wanted to step into chapter 13 for just a moment this morning. Again, let me say quickly, thank you to everyone who has all the different works that you do. Uh, I appreciate our church and that I don't have to say what needs to be done. You just get it done. But for all the work that was done on the flowers and all the uh, decorations for Christmas, I appreciate it so much. And y'all kept them watered so well this time too. That's an inside joke, ain't it? No problem this time, was it? Hebrews chapter 13. I want to preach for just a moment, speak for just a moment, or talk for just a moment, whatever the Lord leads this morning. On content in Jesus. Content in Jesus. And you'll be seeing what I'm speaking about here in just a moment. Hebrews 13, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Boy, we see that in this day and time, don't we? That's what every TV commercial is about. That's why you parents have got so many things thrown over in the corner because, you know, every kid had that toy and your kid had to have it. They played with the box more than they did the toy. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content. Well, that's a word we don't hear much, ain't it? And be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. What a promise. There's so many sermons in these verses this morning. So that you may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Flip over to verse 8. Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. The same yesterday and today and forever. 2 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6. One verse of scripture. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for the touch of your spirit that we feel in this house this morning. Help me to speak forth just the words that are needed. Nothing more and nothing less. Let your word go forth. Let it accomplish what it's meant to be. For those that are here, those who listen by the different means and the different ministries of the church later, let this word speak to their heart. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I know I say a lot about God being good to us. But let me tell you, He has truly been so good to me. January 1 of 2020, we will have been pastoring here 35 years and starting on 36. And God has been so good to me. I hear people, and I tell you this, I see on Facebook and I hear people talking out and it just really gets my dandruff up when they talk about Allegheny and Sparta. I live in Wilts. About all being in a small town. They don't know how blessed they are to have a community where there is love and care and concern one for another. And Allegheny County has been so good to me and my wife. You have just blessed us so abundantly. We, we are just so thankful for what God's done. And I've seen His hand in so, so many ways. I've learned a lot of lessons. A lot of them I learned the hard way. You know those hard lessons you learn uh, sometimes sink in better, don't they? And I've learned a lot of lessons the hard way. But this one thing I have learned is that contentment is a great gain. I look around me today and I see a lot of the problems and the situations and the troubles in the world. And it is that people cannot be satisfied with what God has given them. I'm bad. I know through the years we would travel. We don't travel much anymore. But through the years we used to travel and we'd go see attractions and see situations. And I'd always think that seat over there looks better than the seat I'm sitting in. And I'd stroll around and get over there to there and I'd think, huh, it's better where I was at. Contentment. 
Godliness with contentment is great gain. You see, Jesus is the living water. Jesus is that fountain. The things that He gives satisfies. He, he told us about that person who was thirsty. If they would only drink from the water, the lady that came to the well that day, if she would only drink of the water that He had, that she would never thirst again. You see, we as Christians, we don't catch on to that blessing like we should. That we have all we need in Jesus Christ. He is our all in all. He is our everything. But yet we think if I can just get one more thing. Come on. I'm talking about right before we live. If this could happen in my life, then I'd be happy. No, you wouldn't. If I could accomplish this in life, then I'd be happy. No. True happiness can only come through knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And by knowing that this world that you now live in, you're only passing through. Now, I'm thankful for what God's blessed me with. He's been so good to me. He's given me a lot of nice things, and I'm so thankful for them. He has heaped blessings upon me. But if this world was all I had to look forward to, as Paul said, I would be of all men most miserable. When I look around and I see the things that are coming upon the face of the world, do you realize men's hearts are failing them as the Word of God told us they would because of things that are coming upon the face of the earth, because of things that are happening, because of, I hear every day, I hear every day how different things that will come to mind and remind me that things that God said are setting up are getting ready. The, the things that's in His Word, they are true, they are yea, they are everlasting, and man sees these things. And I would be of all men most miserable if I had hope only in this world. But I know I've got a better place to go. I know I've got a better... Oh, I'm thankful for how He blesses me down here. I'm thankful for what He gives me. I enjoy nice things. I, I enjoy the blessings of God. I enjoy those things and I thank Him for them time and time again because I do not deserve them. I do not deserve any of them and yet He heaps them upon me. But I'm looking forward to being with Him through eternity. The greatest blessing that He gives me is salvation. That I know that I'm a part of the family of God that I know that His hand is upon me. Though I stumble and I falter, yet He loves me. And yet He will not leave me, nor forsake me. You see, it's not dependent. A lot of people feel like it's dependent on them. They feel like they've got to keep the Ten Commandments, or they've got to do this, or they've got to do that, or they've got to do the other. You mean, Brother Doug, that, that the Ten Commandments are not to be kept? Sure they are, but that Spirit that is within you will lead you and will guide you. Too many people get set on religion. And religion will do nothing for you. What you accomplish in yourself will not matter. It is what Christ and His Holy Spirit does in your life. And that can only happen when you trust in Christ Jesus and you look to His cross as the object. When you believe in Him and you trust in Him, then the Holy Spirit has ever right. And He will come in your heart. He'll come in your life. He'll daily lead you. He'll daily guide you. He'll daily direct you. He'll give you that living water. Yeah, I face situations. Yes, I face circumstances. I'm supposed to go back to work Tuesday. Can't hardly wait. <laughs> Excited. I know there's not been a problem. There won't be any problem laying on my desk. Everything's going to be just fine. I live in the same world you do. I know what these things are all about. But yet I know one who will take me, who will never leave me, who will never forsake me, that is making ways to where there seem to be no ways. And this world is not my home. I'm passing through. This world will never satisfy. There's a lot of things in this world I do not understand. Hear me this morning. This is so important. Young person, listen to me. I see people because they have a desire in their heart 
that will sell their families down the road. I'm not going to get into great detail. Do you know why? Because there is a longing down in that heart. I'm not judging them this morning. I'm telling you not to judge them this morning. I'm telling you the key is found right here in these words I read to you this morning. That they want something more. That's the cry of the world, isn't it? One particular commercial says, or used to say, I'm going to show my age, that it gives you all the gusto in the world, but what it gives is it destroys families, it destroys homes, and it destroys lives. But wanting something to satisfy, something to fill that void. But let me tell you, nothing will ever fill the void in your life. Recreation, fun, alcohol, drugs, sin, Whatever it might be that you feel like is going to fill that void in your life, it will never fill that void. Oh, it might dull. It might dull the pain for a while. But it will never fill that void. Every man, woman, girl that's ever been born is born with that God-shaped vacuum in their heart. And only God can fill that void. Only God can give that peace that passeth understanding. And they look and they search. Timothy described it like this in 2 Timothy. You don't have to turn there this morning. But in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7, ever learning, that's our world, isn't it? Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. A simple truth. Not a hard truth to be understood. A simple truth. That Christ came, took my sins, paid the price for my sins on the cross. And by simple faith in the job, in the work, and that He accomplished and that He brought to pass, by simple faith in that, I can be saved and made a part of the family of God. He paid a debt He did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to take my sins away. And Christ's done that for me. Proverbs 27 and 20 says, listen to this. Hear this verse this morning. Hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. I see such gross sin in this day and this time. I see things that, that I never thought would, would happen in our country and in our land. I see it in the leadership, or so-called leadership, of our country. Things that should not even be named among us because man's eyes are never satisfied. Sin will never feel that long, and sin gets grosser and uglier and, and more uglier and more worse. Do I throw my hands up in despair? Do I throw my hands up and quit? Do I shake my head and say there's no need? No, because where sin doth abound. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Where sin doth abound. Brother Doug, it's so dark, it's so awful out there. Yes, it is, but where sin doth abound, the grace of God does so much more abound. Thank God for that grace. Thank God for when my heart begins to feel troubled and, and that discontentment begins to seek in and doubts and fears and confusions of this world begins to come. The grace of God that passeth understanding fills my heart and my mind and my soul and my body. Looking back to Hebrews where we read a while ago and Verse 5 of chapter 13, The Lord is my helper. You see, Christ is the answer. Christ is the answer. There's no other answer. There's no other way. But Christ is the answer. The Lord is my helper. Aren't you thankful that you have one that can be with you? 
How does people make it in this world? How do they live? How do they face another day? Not knowing that they can call upon God. And we wonder why a lot of the things are going on in the world. We wonder why suicides are and why families are abandoned and there's troubles and situations because people do not have God to call upon and to trust in and to believe in and know that He will be their helper and He will be with them. He said here in these verses of Scripture to you, and I want you to hear this. This is so important. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. We see so many things coming upon the face of the earth. We see man and our leadership getting grosser and worse. We, we see things that are happening. We see how that babies, they call them lumps or whatever. I'm talking about abortion. Sure I am. We see where it's condoned. We see where actual murder is condoned and that it's all right. It's called choice. That sounds so much better. No, it's not. It's murder. We see how that now older folks, you think it's not coming. You know, I used to think, I got, I got thinking a while ago, I better explain this right here. I don't know how it happened. I didn't get mad and hit a wall. Used to, but don't anymore. But as you get older, I used to hear the older folks talk about their skin just tiring and whatever. I was out working yesterday. I don't know. I just looked down and there it was, tore. Don't know what happened. But now, as they get older, they are, their, their, their quality of life is the word they like to use. They like to make it sound good, don't they? Their quality of life is not good enough. And so we just need to help them exit on out. We see these things happening, don't we? We never thought that they would. But I don't have to fear these things. Oh, I'm going to stand against them. I'm going to call right, right, and wrong, wrong. But I don't have to fear them nor be afraid. Because I know in whom I believe and whom I trust that His hand will be there with me to lead me and to guide me and to direct me. He will never leave me nor forsake me. I'm going to, I'm going to hurry you want to be flipping to Psalms 37 with me? And yes, I love his Psalms. If you come here much or you listen much, you know I love this Psalms. It's so full of wonderful stuff. Talking about Christ is the answer. He will bring contentment. He promised us he would never leave us nor forsake us. I know what it is to walk through dark situations. And I've been your pastor now, or will be in just a couple of days for 35 years. And I've walked with you in some dark, dark situations. I've been with some and seen things happen in your life that I would say to myself, but Junior, I'd say, I just don't see how that individual's going to come out. Because I knew how, how they were. I knew their set of mind, and, and I knew about them, and, and I knew this would just destroy them physically, destroy them in every way. And I've seen the Holy Ghost of God. Oh, I feel His presence. Come down and lift them up. When they thought that they were forsaken, when they thought there was no way, when they thought there was no hope, I've seen the Holy Ghost of God overshadow them and bring them up and strengthen them. I watched my mom and dad as they gave up a, a son and a daughter-in-law and I thought this would destroy them, but I seen the Holy Ghost of God touch my precious mom. During the darkest hours, during the darkest times, I've told you about my uncle, one of the most godly men, 90-some years old, he gets around better than I do. He eats an apple every day is what he says it is all about. And he trusts in the Lord. I seen him get to the place that he did not even know his own family many years ago. Dark place. But during that darkest time, my aunt told us how the Holy Glory be to God, how the Holy Ghost of God came upon him and he began to speak with other tongues as the spirits gave the utterance and God brought him out. Don't ever think you're forsaken. Don't ever think that you're somewhere that God's not. He will never leave you. 
He will never forsake you. Let me go on. He is the same. I like people that's the same, don't you? Now, come on, be honest. We're all in this world. We all live down here. If I come up and pinch you and pinch you hard enough, you're going to say something. You might even hit me. So I'm not going to do it. But I like people that's the same. I mean, we all get angry. We all have bad days. But you've seen those people. One moment, they're just up this high. The next moment, they're that low. And, and you just never know what kind of reaction you're going to get out of them. Jesus is always the same. Love. Well, I've been to the place that, that I've, I've said, Lord, it's, it's me again. And I've held my head down just as low as I could hold it. I failed, I've stumbled, I've faltered. Many times expecting an angry response. And you know what I get every time? Glory to God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Child, I love you. As long as you keep your eyes upon me, I, I don't care. Those things are now forgotten. You brought them to me. You're still at mine. Ain't that a wonderful thing that, that, that He loves us regardless of our faults and our failures and our shortcomings? That He is the same. He is love. Love that is beyond my imagination. Love that is beyond my thought. Love that, that I cannot grab a hold of. He loves me always the same. When I'm good and when I'm bad, He loves me. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Psalms 37, and I'm going to close. Now I'm going to read the whole Psalms, verse 16. If you've not read the whole Psalms before, you ought to. Listen to what he says, verse 16. A little that a righteous man had is better than the riches of many wicked. Don't look around at the riches of this world. I, I was thinking the other day, and I'm going to hush. I was thinking the other day about how blessed I've been to, to go to a lot of places. God's blessed me through, through the job that I had to go to places. I've seen places that just baffled my understanding and baffled my mind. Because I know building materials, I looked up at the molding and it went on for <laughs> further than I could see in that building. And I began to just calculate in my mind what the molding, and I'd never be able to pay for the molding. But they don't bring satisfaction. We have a house upon the hill that we can see now. Yakin County, Wilkes County, Surrey County, all around you can see that house upon the hill. Has over a million dollar pool. Has things that you just, that, that would blow your mind. Doesn't satisfy. Well, I'm thankful for it. A lot of people say, oh, well, why should Anybody have something? Well, I'm glad he does because it's put a lot of food on my table. Put a lot of food on workers' tables that he could have just had in the bank or on Wall Street somewhere. I'm glad he brought it here and he's using it. But I don't look and covet it. I don't look and envy it because I have something that is beyond imagination. I'm not saying he does it. I don't know his heart. I have something that I cannot explain that, that brings a peace, Brother Bobby, that, that when I'm facing whatever is right there in front of me, I know He is with me. And He will never leave me nor forsake me. Psalms 37, verse 16, I just read to you, A little that a righteous man had is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, listen, and their inheritance shall be Forever. Do you realize you have an inheritance? An eternal inheritance that will not pass away. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Verse 19. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and the, the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Why should I worry? Oh, I, I, I get concerned about the economy. I get concerned about different things. But why should I worry? Why should I fret? My Heavenly Father will never forget to send sunshine, heavenly sunshine, after the rain. I'm going to read just a few more verses, and we're going to close. Verse 23. 
The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his ways. Though he fall, doesn't mean you're not going to fall when you start living for Christ. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I've been young. You've heard me mention this verse of Scripture many times. I've been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful, and he lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Then skip down to verse 37. All these other verses are good, but I'm talking about the righteous individual right now, the one who trusts in God and depends upon Him. Not righteous in Himself, but righteous in Christ Jesus. Verse 37. Mark the perfect man and uphold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Do you realize peace is worth more than anything this world has? There is people that would give every riches that they have if they could just have the peace of God. In their heart. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. At the end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation, listen, the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them. Not might help them. Not possibly can help them. But the Lord shall help them. And deliver them. Might not be the way that I think. Might not be the way I want, but he will deliver and bring out. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them. Why? Because they trust in him. There's an old hymnal. Oh, him. And the hymnal, and I meant to have it done looked up and ready. Thanks, Sister Betty. It's all I need. Jesus Christ is made to me. All I need, all I need. I'll tell you where it's at here in a minute. 183. Thanks, just hope. And find your hymn right there, and let's read it here for just a moment. Songwriter wrote this in 1906. I believe inspired by the Holy Ghost of God. Jesus Christ is made to me. All I need, all I need. He alone is all my plea. He is all I need. There's no other plea. There's no other plea but Christ. When we come to Him, He is our plea. Listen, verse 2. Jesus is my all and glory be to God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I feel the preacher coming around now. Jesus is my all and all. While He keeps, I cannot fall. Not while I keep. Not while I try to pull myself up by my bootstraps. Come on. Not when I try to do better or I try to do this or I, but when He keeps. When I place my total faith and trust in Christ and His cross, then He will keep. Verse 3, He redeemed me when He died. I with Him was crucified. To my Savior will I cleave. He will not his servant leave. Never leave us, never forsake us. Listen to verse 5. And here is the problem with the church in this day. We have not made him the treasure. We've got our eyes on so many other things. I said, I'm including us all. On so many other things we have our eyes on. But listen. He's the treasure of my soul. He have cleansed and made me whole. Glory. Verse 6. Glory, glory to the Lamb. By His Spirit sealed I am. He is all I need. Wisdom, righteousness, and power. Holiness forevermore. 
my redemption full and sure. He is all I need. Father, glory be to God. Thank you for the touch of your spirit right now. Thank you, Lord, for the touch that we have felt all the way through this morning. Glory to God. Lord, I thank you for the work that I've seen you already do upon hearts and upon lives here this morning, upon me. Lord, that I get my focus off of me and I get my focus off of the world and I place my focus upon Jesus Christ, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. The one who started me on this race is the one who will finish and will accomplish it and will bring it to pass. I thank you for that grace that we walk in, that we stand in. Help us, Lord, not to thirst for the things of this world. They'll pass away. But, Lord, help us to thirst after and hunger after righteousness. And when we do, you will fill your people to the full. Lord, you know every heart here this morning. Lord, you know every life here this morning. Lord, I pray if there's one here that has not came and drunk of this water of life freely, help them to see it's the only thing, God, the only thing that will ever satisfy and bring true peace and joy in their lives. Lord, I thank you for our young people. They're they're so precious to us, God. I thank you for bringing them to us. Lord, you know their families. Lord, you you know, God, the things they face. You know, Lord, the things that they go through in school. And I pray, God, that your hand be upon them. I pray, God, that you touch their families. Let them take the good word of God to their families and show that there is hope, that there is peace, that there is joy in Christ Jesus. Let them know, Lord, that you love them with an everlasting love and you know right where they're at. Help them, God, to look to you and trust in you. And Lord, let them know that this church loves them and that we care for them. Lord, touch us this morning as adults. You know what we face in this world. Lord, when we leave this house today, you know, God, what faces us. You you know what faces us tomorrow and and through the rest of this week, Lord. you, You know the situations and the circumstances that will come our way. But Lord, I know you already have it all under control. Remind us of that fact this morning. Remind us this morning how blessed we are. Help us, God, to realize that godliness with contentment is the greatest gain that anybody could ever have. In Jesus.